In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create the flag of the United States of America using Python's Turtle module. To get started today, we're going to jump over to our Python editor. I'm using Mew. And the first line of code we're going to throw in is the same as always, from Turtle import star. That's just saying from the Turtle module, we're going to import all the different functions inside of it so we now have access um, to drawing on the screen. Second line of code I'm going to put in is the setup function, which simply says um, we're going to set up the page to a particular size. So the first value is the x um, axis, so we're going to spread it across 800 pixels or 800 steps. And for the y value, I'm going to go with 500. So it's an 800 by 500 pixel page. And the final thing I need to do before we get started is just set the speed to zero. So when we are drawing today, um, we are going to be drawing at the quickest speed possible. Now I want you to just quickly save that before we go any further, just call it the USA flag and save it. Give it a quick run to make sure you've got a rectangular screen size. That's the 800 pixels across, 500 pixels down. Okay, so we're good to go. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the red stripes that appear in the background of the page. We've already got a white background so we don't need to worry about them. We're just going to draw the red stripes on top of it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the coordinates for the red stripes. So I'm going to put in a comment. Set up the start coordinates for the red stripes. And all I'm going to do is create two variables here. One called stripe underscore x and the other one called stripe underscore y. And we're just going to set these to the coordinates that we want to start our stripes at. So I'm going to set my x value to minus 400, which is the very left-hand edge of the page. And to get me up in the top left-hand corner, I am going to set it to 250 for the y value. So minus 400 and 250 are our starting coordinates today. All right, moving along, what we're going to do now is create a function to draw one red stripe, or in other words, a red rectangle. Instead of drawing seven different rectangles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we're just going to do the code for one. And because we're going to do it inside of a function, we can call that function up and reuse that code another six times to get all seven rectangles drawn. So let's put in a comment that says draw one red stripe. Well, it's not even drawing it yet, I suppose. It's just inside of a function, but we'll leave it at that. Oops. There we go. Let's define a function. So write DEF at the start. That just says we're defining a function and come up with a name for your function. I'm going to use the word stripe. That's fairly meaningful. And now inside of this function, we simply put the code to draw one red stripe. So the color I'm going to use today is not quite red. I'm going to go with fire brick. It's a little bit less intense than the um, default red that Python uses. Once we've got our color set, we can turn on our fill. And we just create a simple loop to draw a rectangle now. So for i in range 2, we're going to go forward 800. So that just runs a line straight across the top of the page. We turn right 90 degrees and then go forward 38. And then turn right 90 degrees again. That forward 38 there, I did a little bit of maths um, just beforehand. So just follow along with me and you should have the right size rectangle uh, to fit perfectly on the flag. Now once you've finished creating that little loop, we just end the fill. So that there is the simple code to draw a fire brick colored rectangle. Okay, we repeat it twice, we get the big long side at 800, the short side at 38. And it's just going to repeat that twice to enclose a rectangle. Um, and that's our first red stripe, or the code for one red stripe drawn. It's not going to appear on the page yet though because it's inside of a function. We actually have to call up the stripe function in our code for the computer to actually run this. So, okay, so let's do that now. We might draw all seven stripes now in one hit. So let's put in a comment, uh, uh, yeah, comment, sorry, that says draw the seven red stripes. And now on the next line, we're going to just make a loop that repeats seven times. So for i in range seven, uh, we're going to first of all lift our pen up because we need to go to our starting position. Remember we set that up here with these coordinates or these variables. So let's call them up stripe underscore x and stripe underscore y. So that will have us in our starting position in the very top left hand corner of the page. Put our pen down when you're ready. 
And now what we need to do is simply call up the stripe function that we just created before. So when the computer sees this stripe bracket bracket, it goes back up here to the stripe function that we created and runs all of the code inside of it. Okay, and because we have this inside of a loop, it's going to be repeating seven times, it's going to create seven stripes for us. The only issue at the moment is it's going to draw them all on top of one another. So what we need to do on the next line is just change our Y value. Each time we draw one stripe, we want to change the Y value a little bit so it draws another rectangle further down the page. So we just do stripe Y equals stripe Y minus 76. Again, I've done a little bit of maths beforehand to make sure that that um, 76 there is the right amount of spacing to fit seven red stripes on the page. And that's it. I know it's a little bit confusing, but all we've done is we've created a function or defined a function that will create one rectangle down here. Instead of writing out that code seven times, we just call it up here using the stripe um, function. Well, let's give it a run and see if we get our seven red stripes. There you go. That's our background of the flag done. Easy. Next part's pretty easy too. It's just drawing that blue um, rectangle that we put our stars inside of. So let's put in a comment here that says draw the blue rectangle. And first up, we're going to lift our pen up off the page and go to a new set of coordinates. It's just up in the top left hand corner again. So minus 400, comma 250. Oops, and we put our pen back down once we are in position, ready for drawing. Now we're going to switch our color over this time to navy, which is just a navy blue. And once you've picked your color, you're ready to turn your fill on. So throw in the begin fill function, and we're going to create a simple loop to draw another rectangle. So for I in range, we're going to repeat this next section of code two times. We're going to go forward 350. We're going to go right 90 degrees, and then go forward again 266. Very specific numbers, but I have done the maths um, beforehand, so just follow along with me and you should get the right ones. Jump out of that loop at the end and just end the fill, or turn the fill off. So all we've done there is just drawn a simple navy blue rectangle. Let's have a quick look and make sure that is working okay. All right, that looks pretty good to me. So we're into the tricky part now, where we draw the stars. This is where we're going to be creating quite a few functions. It can get a little bit confusing, but just follow along with me and you should be fine. So if we go back and have a look at the USA flag, we've got some 50 odd stars that we need to draw. And we can see it's all nice and neatly lined up as well. So we've got quite a bit of um, thinking or maths involved with this one to get it right. Lucky for you, I've done the maths for you. Now the first row of stars has one, two, three, four, five, six in it. And the second row has five stars in it. So just keep that in mind. I might name these rows even rows for the first and the ones that have six stars in them. And then for the other rows that have five stars in them, I'll call them odd rows. So just keep that in mind as well when we are coding in just a moment. So first up, I might throw in the code for one star. We're going to make a function just to draw one simple star. I can't be bothered writing it 50 odd times. So what I'm going to do is just write it once and use that function over and over again to draw the stars. So let's define a function called star. And we'll change our color to white. We'll turn our fill on by using begin fill and just put in a simple loop for I in range five. This is going to be a five sided star. That's why I'm going to repeat this loop five times. It's going to be a small star. We're only going to go forward 20 steps at a time and we're going to turn pretty sharply at 144 degrees to the right. Once you're done, end that fill. And that's all you need to draw one simple star. But remember, that's a function, so it's not going to appear on your screen yet. You've got to call up the star function in your code so that the computer knows to run this little snippet here. So we'll get onto that in just a moment. I better put in a comment there, actually. Draw one star. All right. So now that we've got that one star code in, what we need to do is get our coordinates set. So where do we want these stars to begin? You can see they're up in the top left-hand corner here, but not quite on the edge of the page. So we're going to come in a little bit from that top left-hand corner. So I'm just going to put in a comment that says set up um, star coordinates. And I might start with this first star up here. So the X and Y values for the first star can be called X1 and Y1. 
So x1 is going to be equal to about minus 380, and y1 is going to be about 230. So that's just a little bit in from the top left-hand corner of the page. Now the other star I want to position now is this second star down here on the next row. Okay, so I'm going to call that one x2 and y2. So just imagine that's the x and y coordinates for the star on the second row. And it's going to be set to minus 350 for the x value. The y value is set to 205. So there are our starting coordinates for the rows of stars. Um, what I might do now is code up the first row, which is the even row of stars. This first one here has six stars in it. Okay, again, we're going to do it inside of a function because not, am I going to, not only am I going to repeat it just once, but we've got one, two, three, four, five rows in total. So again, I don't want to write that five times. Let's just use a function. It works so much better. So, comment code for one even row of stars. That's what I'll write there. And we'll create a function. Let's just call this even row. Bracket, bracket, colon. Okay, in this even row, we're going to bring in something we haven't really used much before. It's a global variable. I'll explain that to you once I've written it. We just write global x1 and global y1. And what that's going to do is give us access to these variables out here. Because they were set up outside of this function, we have to tell the computer that it's a global variable, which means we can now use it inside of this function. A little bit confusing, I know, but just imagine we've now got access to x1 and y1, these coordinates just here. Okay, if we didn't put global in there, the computer wouldn't know what we're talking about. They'd be like, what the hell is x1? What the hell's y1? Okay, but by making it global, the computer can look outside of this function and spot them just up here. All right, so we've got global x1 and y1 in. We're going to create a loop now for i in range, and it's how many row, oh, sorry, how many stars in that first row. So as I said before, one, two, three, four, five, six. So for i in range six, first thing we're going to do is lift our pen up and go to those x1 and y1 coordinates that we've already set up, and then put our pen down when we're in position. Once our pen's in position, we are going to call up that star function that we created before, and this is going to draw for me a single star. But because it's inside of a loop that's repeating six times, it's going to draw six stars. At the moment, they're all on top of each other, so let's quickly change our x1 coordinate. So x1 equals x1 plus 57. That just moves at 57 steps to the right, so we'll have that nice row of stars. Um, and that should be it to draw that even row of stars. Okay, now remember it's inside of a function, and we haven't called this even row function up yet, so we can't actually see it on the page yet. That's what we're going to do now. So instead of just drawing one even row of stars, we're going to draw five of them. So draw the five even rows of stars. And this is fairly simple now. We just do for i in range five. This is going to be the one, two, three, four, five rows of stars. And all we need to do is call up the function called even row. That's going to repeat it five times. At the moment, when it does the rows of stars, they're going to be all drawn on top of each other. So what we need to do is quickly change our coordinates. So uh, the x1 just needs to go back to the start at 380, I think it was. Oh, minus 380, sorry. And y1, we're going to move it down the page. So y1 will be equal to y1 minus 52. So each row of stars just drops down 52 spaces. Well, that's a lot to take in. So let's test it and see if we're actually on the right track here. So let's give it a run. We should see our red stripes first, our blue rectangle. There's our first even row of stars. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. That looks good. Okay, so we're off to a good start. You can also see this little white thing just here on the last star. That's just our turtle that's drawing the shape. So we're going to hide him later, so don't stress about that. That's looking pretty good, though. If we go back to our original flag here, we've got all the even rows done. So what we need to do now is just slip the odd rows in between each of those even rows. And I think we'll have a pretty decent looking flag. So back to our code here. Let's start focusing on the odd rows of stars. It's kind of similar to what we've just done. So what you see now shouldn't confuse you too much more. 
So let's put in the code for one odd row of stars. And down in the next line, let's define um, a function called odd row, bracket, bracket, and a colon. And inside of it, we need to set up some global variables again. This time it's going to be x2 and global y2. So that just gives us access to these two coordinates here that we set up a little bit earlier on. Okay, I won't go in and explain those global variables anymore. I think I confused you enough with the first explanation. Um, so once we've got that, we're going to do for i in range 5. Remember, we've got five stars in the odd rows, not six anymore. So that's why we're doing five stars here, or five loops of the code. Now we do our pen up. We are going to x2 and y2. So they're the coordinates we set earlier. And then we just put our pen down on the page once we're in position and call up the star function again. So that function to draw one star is going to be called up here, and it's going to be repeated five times. Now that's going to be drawing all those five stars on top of each other. So remember, we just need to change the x2 variable. So x2 plus 57, just evenly space it out along the row. And that is our odd row of star function all drawn up. So now it's time to just put it into our uh, flag. So draw the four odd rows of stars is our comment. Whoops. And it's a simple 4i in range 4, because we've got the four rows to draw. Uh, we call up the whoops, the odd row function to draw the odd row of stars. It's going to repeat it four times, but remember, they're drawing on top of each other at the moment, so we need to just update our coordinates. x2 needs to move back to the start, which was minus 350. And y2 is going to be equal to y2 minus 51. That ought to do it. Um, the last thing I want to do is just hide my turtle. And we don't want to see that little um, turtle on the screen. It makes our stars look a bit funny. Let's give that a run. Red stripes, blue rectangle. Here come the even rows of stars. And hopefully our odd rows of stars sit nicely in between those gaps. Let's have a look. That's looking pretty nice. There you have it. We have now finished drawing ourselves the flag of the USA. So a little bit confusing at times there with all the different functions we're using and global variables, but you're just taking the next step or the next progression in your coding career. Okay, I'll catch you in another video shortly.